Hey guys, it's me, Tikani, and today we are going to be recapping Southern Charm Savannah Season 1, Episode 5, The Perfect Storm. Trigger warning, there's talks of racism and absolutely way too much ignorance from the cast. As someone who doesn't experience racism, I mean, I'm white as a ghost. I can hide in the paper aisle. I can't speak for those who do experience racism. We continue where we left off last episode, with Nelson using the Yiddish version of the N-word. Daniel takes his time to explain how the word was used, and who it was used by and directed towards, and he wasn't sure if Nelson understood that. Nelson's immediately like, I think it's egregious that you're quoting me in my own home. And Daniel replies, well, next time you hear me say something racist, please do quote me in my own home. I think it's weird that Nelson immediately went to, you can't quote me behind closed doors. Because it wasn't just behind closed doors. If you can remember, it was also in the episode. <laughs> also, it doesn't make it okay just because you didn't say it derogatorily towards somebody. It's still racist. Anyway, then because Nelson has no balls, he says in the safety of his confessional that Daniel's grandma said it all the time. And he didn't know it was racist. Daniel's literally telling you right now, that's racist. I would also like to remind everybody that after Nelson said that, Daniel's like, I don't know if you understand what you're saying. That doesn't really make sense to say. And Nelson's reply was, oh, so you do know what I'm saying. To me, that kind of implies that he did know what that word meant, allegedly. But in my opinion, it kind of implies that he did know what that word meant. Because why else would you say, oh, so you do know what I'm saying? Like, that's such a bizarre thing to say, especially when someone's like, hey, I don't know if you understand that word. Nelson then goes on to say, sometimes people use words in a metaphorical, allegorial sense. It's still racist, even if it's a metaphor. And saying metaphorically allegorial <laughs> and being fancy with your words doesn't change that it's racist. Azam then calls Nelson out and says, you talk about racism in an allegorial sense. And then Nelson denies it, even though he just said that in the confessional. <laughs> Happy then shares with the group that she deals with people being racist towards Azam every single day. And unfortunately, Nelson won't just listen to her and let her talk. But while Happy is talking, Brandon's like, well, what do you deal with that we don't know about? And as Happy is continuing to share her experience as someone in an interracial relationship, Nelson's rolling his eyes and honestly, steam is just coming from my ears at this point. Happy then goes on to say that Azam is judged for his skin and his religion all of the time. And then Nelson's like, me saying a Yiddish slur has nothing to do with racism. Nelson, are you even listening to anybody talk right now? As the table keeps talking, Lyle, of course, gets up and is like, I'm leaving. Then in both Lyle's and Catherine's confessionals, they both say that Nelson didn't have any bad intentions and blah, blah, blah. I won't get too preachy, especially since it's not my place to talk about it, but it doesn't matter what your intentions are. Nelson used a Yiddish slur. He has been told it's a Yiddish slur. And instead of apologizing for using said slur and growing from it, he just denies and deflects and completely avoids taking accountability. And in my opinion, I think that's what makes Nelson racist. His lack of willingness to take accountability and acknowledge pain that he's caused to those around him Nelson then leaves the dinner party, and Catherine, of course, chases after him. Nelson's like, I'm not racist just because I said that word, allegedly. Y'all, <laughs> then it goes back to Daniel, Lyle, and Louie. And honestly, Lyle and Louie are just the big L boys to me. L in the chat for Lyle and Louie. Daniel asks Lyle and Louie if they have a problem that he relates to his mom about the racist comments. And Louie's like, why do you always gotta be a martyr? I don't know, Louis. Maybe it's because he's a good person and is taking the time to educate someone as ignorant as Nelson. He also didn't directly call Nelson racist. Rather, he said Nelson used a racist word. It confuses me that these guys were crapping so hard on Ashley for not saying that she works at Delta, but they have nothing to say with Nelson not taking accountability or acknowledging the fact that he said something racist. And instead, they choose to crap on Daniel for, let me see, oh yeah, standing up for what's right. Daniel then goes on to explain that all of his friends are a part of a club that he can't join because he's Jewish. And that Lyle and Louie don't understand what it's like. Louie then says that Daniel's just playing the victim. 
And Lyle completely dismisses what Daniel says and says that he can't join because he's a loser. Louis says in his confessional that it has nothing to do with Daniel being Jewish, and it's just because he rubs people the wrong way. And in Daniel's confessional, he excuses his friend's actions by saying that they're drunk and they just can't listen to him right now. Then he just brushes it under the rug. I'm sorry, Daniel. It's not that your friends are too drunk to listen. Listen. But it's not that your friends are too drunk to listen. They're just racist. Allegedly. Also, Louis was sober in his confessional when he said that Daniel is just blaming his religion. After that absolutely excruciating and infuriating conversation at last night's dinner party, today everyone's getting ready to leave the town because of Hurricane Matthew. Catherine calls Ashley and says that she wants to have a quick chat outside of the group and she wants to address the allegations. So Ashley and Catherine meet up at the park. Ashley says that she was bombarded with a ton of nasty rumors and she felt like she was backed into a corner. Catherine then apologizes for judging her based off of only what she heard. They then talk about the hurricane, say good luck, and go their separate ways. Catherine is riding with Hannah and tells her about the resolution she had with Ashley. Hannah doesn't think it's a real resolution, though, and Catherine actually defends Ashley. Meanwhile, Ashley is riding with Nelson, and they're talking about his side at the dinner. And since Peacock has a 10-second clip and seeing his face just infuriated me i hit the 10 second clip and it immediately cut to nelson saying it's just like donald trump's locker room talk i don't care for discussing politics but saying a slur is not the same as locker room talk we then cut to louis selling his socks in a bar for some reason and then in his confessional he says that socks are going to be a 23 billion dollar business in 2023 i don't know who he heard that from but it's 2024 and i could tell you that he it wasn't booming, bro. Wasn't booming. Shep from Southern Charm meets up with Lyle, Louie, and Daniel at the bar. Hannah and Catherine join them, and Louie is completely drunk. Which, if you remember, he was selling his socks at this bar. Who's buying socks at a bar? Don't know. Not me. But I don't go into bars, so I guess I don't know what goes on in bars. Do they sell socks in bars regularly? Shep then kind of flirts with Catherine and tells her that if she and Lyle break up, that he's available. We cut to Ashley talking to her mom about being married to Dennis and how she feels so lonely. And her mom comforts her. Daniel and Louie and Lyle, the L boys, go to the factory to look at how some socks are made. Hannah and Catherine get pedicures and FaceTime with Happy. And then everybody meets up with Thomas Ravenel, Shep, and Austin from Southern Charm for some bowling. They all do the bowling and Thomas is flirting with Catherine. Catherine asks about Thomas's love life and also talks about how she's scared to marry Lyle, even though she loves them. She's just not ready for that kind of commitment yet. Then they end the episode by driving back home and driving around looking at all the damage. Thank you guys for joining me of this recap of Southern Charm Savannah, Season 1, Episode 5. What did you think of the episode? Were you disappointed in all of the ignorance on display from the cast members? Are you on Daniel's side? Or do you think that maybe it shouldn't have been mentioned at the party and it should have been mentioned in private? I'm personally glad that he called it out in public because it happened in public, even if the rest of the boys don't remember it. It happened with them there. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like or dislike the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.